Republican have cast their votes. 35 percent Democrat, 38 Republican. Well, certainly an interesting week as far as the weather goes. Professor Scott Mandia joins us, professor of physical science at Suffolk County Community College on Long Island. He's been teaching meteorology and climate change courses for the last 20 years. Professor, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much for having me on the show again. You know, I, I grew up on the Gulf Coast and I've uh, been through a number of hurricanes. And one thing I always looked for was the, the atmospheric pressure in the middle, because I know that the lower it was, the stronger the storm. It seemed like, for example, the, the atmospheric pressure with Sandy was so low, I was surprised it wasn't a Category 3, maybe even a 4 storm, but it, it was a Category 1. How is that? Right. And, right. Well, uh, Sandy was unique in a sense that uh, she kind of was trying to transition from being a hurricane to what we call an extratropical cyclone or what you would call maybe a nor'easter. Mm-hmm. Um, so that actually prevented it from becoming even a stronger hurricane. But you're right. I mean, when Sandy made landfall, she tied the Hurricane of 38 for the lowest pressure of any storm hitting north of Hatteras. And at one point, pressure was down to 941 millibars, which is the lowest recorded pressure ever in the North Atlantic for any storm. So although it was a Category 1 storm, for all intents and purposes, the damage was certainly much more like a Category 3, as you mentioned. And By the way, to put it in perspective, the amount of energy from Sandy was equivalent to three and a half atomic bombs. There was actually even more energy in this storm than Katrina because of its sheer size. Wow. So was this just a freak thing that, you know, once in a lifetime, obviously nobody in our lifetime has ever seen anything like this, uh, or, or is this a sign of more to come? Well, unfortunately, it uh, does look like it's a sign of more to come, because one of the reasons why Sandy uh, stayed such a powerful storm so far north is the waters off, off the northeast are about five degrees warmer, and uh, we're warming the oceans, and part of that uh, is going to make these storms even more powerful. It was a combination of what we would call typical weather and also climate change and warming the planet. So we probably will see more of these things in the future. It's been projected, and, it, and we saw last year with Irene, that technically was a tropical storm, but it caused more, up until this storm, more flood damage than, than most hurricanes that have hit. In fact, even in Vermont, 80 years of flooding, and Vermonters would never even think about worrying about a hurricane. So it's just a lot more moisture in the air, so these storms are going to get stronger and stronger as we move through the century. What was unique? Uh, New Jersey really took a, a hit this time around. What was so unique about this storm that it was so bad for them? Right. Well, it's a combination of things. Most of us know that the jet stream moves west to east, right? Mm-hmm. Chicago's weather hits Washington, D.C. the next day in New York. Um, the jet stream normally goes that direction. Well, we had what's called a blocking pattern. We had a big area of high pressure over the Atlantic that essentially was a wall. It just wouldn't let Sandy go to the east. At the same time, we had this big, loopy jet stream coming out of Canada that turned it back into the coast. And so you have a storm actually moving backwards toward New Jersey, and it's spinning around at, you know, 75, 80 miles per hour. So you add that wind speed onto the motion 25 miles per hour west, and that's why you saw these wind gusts almost 100 miles per hour. And it was very slow, so it was just hours and hours and hours of pushing water toward the coast. So it would be like sitting in a tub, and for 24, 36 hours, you're constantly pushing the water to one side of the tub. It only has one place to go, and that's up. And that's why this is so bad. So uh, the, if the oceans are warming and the climate is changing and we can expect more of this, how concerned are you as someone who's following this stuff? Oh, I'm, I'm very concerned. I think... Uh, the other factor you have to consider is the oceans are rising because the oceans are warmer and we're melting ice. So in the New York area, because of sea level rise, that's an extra foot in the last 100 years or so and about six to eight inches since 1960. So right off the bat, Sandy had one foot more of storm surge that she wouldn't have had if the planet weren't warming. So the projections for New York are that we could see sea level rise go as much as four or five feet higher by the end of the century So now imagine Sandy comes in with another five feet of storm surge. You're looking at almost 20 feet of storm surge. That's just more area of Long Island, New Jersey, New York City that are underwater. So that alone, even if storms aren't stronger, that alone is going to make them worse. And and I know that you, Scott, are uh, in in Long Island right now, uh, and and it's just been devastated. What What are you seeing on the ground there? Well, i got to say, first, we're very fortunate. Our power never went out for more than 15 minutes, but uh, 82% of residents of Long Island, about a million people, uh, lost power for an extended period of time. And last night I was going up and down our street trick-or-treating, and we were joking that people were busing kids into our street because we were about the only street that didn't look like a war zone. You literally go a half a mile in any direction. My wife's a runner, and she, she, there were some roads she couldn't even run on 
because they were so blocked by trees and power lines. Imagine that. You're on your foot, and you can't even get around these things. Roads were closed. So it's really, really bad. I've been out of school and the kids for a week, so I think we'll probably get back next week. But one week from a storm that wasn't even a hurricane for us. Imagine what happens if we get a Katrina. How, how do you think you guys got so lucky? I don't know. We got lucky with Irene, too, because yeah. uh, we only lost power for about three years, or three years, for uh, three hours <laughs> yeah. last year. He's um, got connections. I guess, uh, I guess <laughs> our, our, we've got good trees. Here. Yeah. you got good really power sure. karma. <laughs> well, you know, maybe they know I'm here and they the storms uh, want to go around me. I hope that's the case, for my family anyway. <laughs> uh, Scott, real quick, 30 seconds left on the program. I was impressed with how accurate the models were. We really have come a long way in forecasting the tracks of these things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as we understand the physics of the atmosphere more and more, these computer models are phenomenal. Uh, a week before the storm, I actually warned my colleagues, go to the stores because in about two days you're going to hear a news story about a hurricane. And I was driving home, and I grabbed a couple of beers. I told the guy, hurricane's coming. He looked at me like I have three heads. So, yeah, we, 